Yeah, this is like, we don't normally do this sort of format. So this yeah, is yeah. like a first for us, really. Okay, I should hope it's okay for you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for welcoming me to this fabulous facility. Um, could you introduce yourself and say a bit about who you are and how you got here? Yeah, of course. Uh, my name is James Bassett. I'm the Senior Experimental Officer uh, for V Simulators. I look after uh, the facility right from conception uh, through to building it and, and conducting the experimental work here. Right. So, right from conception, so how long ago was that? Um, it must be coming on to five years now. We've been working on the idea. I remember Julie. Julie, was, yes. Yeah, she came and did a, a, like a, a lightning talk about this facility yeah. when it was still being built. Yeah. So that must be about two years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, we finished comp uh, the building was handed over in October 2019. Um, they started in the January of 19 on the building, and we'd been working on the design um, beforehand, uh, obviously with the architects and Morgan Sindel who put it together for us. Brilliant. So, V Simulators. What is V Simulators? <laughs> So V Simulators was uh, born out of an idea from uh, civil and structural engineering. How do uh, people and occupants react to their built environment? So moving floors, uh, colour, uh, lights, heat, temperature, um, any environment that you can be in, we could simulate here was the, was the concept. And we have a sister facility at Bath uh, that looks at tall buildings. Okay. So, the, and the key point to that is this articulated floor. Exactly. We have a we have a, um, a large force plate and a uh, octopod design underneath here. Well, octa crank is the correct term. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll do a little tour of the underground. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so we've got moving floor, which is three point eight by three point eight meters, uh, fully instrumented, and we have motion capture inside here, the OptiTrack system. And we have nine head-mounted displays for virtual reality at this facility. Our sister facility in Bath has um, projected reality inside a room and the entire room is, uh, is moved. I've seen that, so they, they project the, like an imagery onto each wall, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, they have full climate control inside their chamber. So you say you're simulating the, 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 the environment for buildings and things like that. Exactly. Um, so, so you obviously you've got the audio and visual um, sort of simulation for these for your VR headsets. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, initially, that that was where the project was born from was the the civils and structural engineering. We quite quickly realised when we opened it up to the rest of the uh, the university community that actually we're much further advanced than a normal bio mech lab. Um, we have the lar world's largest force player right here. Uh, we have a, such a large space for the motion capture, so you're able to capture the biomechanics of people um, uh, very well. And um, we, we suddenly found that a lot of our work and research ideas were coming from outside of engineering, coming from sports and health sciences, coming from uh, medical applications, uh, rehabilitation of patients, and uh, it's, it's expanded into uh, growth areas that we just had never conceived of before. It's a medical application. What, what's an example of one of those? Uh, rehabilitation of patients, so people that have undergone hip surgery, right. for example. Uh, we have a grant uh, currently on Parkinson's and gait freezing. Um, so these are applications that we had never envisaged at the concept of the project. Yeah, it's the case of sometimes once you have the facility, it's like build it and exactly, the research yeah. and the ideas will come afterwards. Uh, exactly, and, and it really does appear to have gone that way, which is, which is great news for us. Obviously, you can't do an interview without talking about COVID. <laughs> so yeah. I imagine, so you were starting up in November, October 2019, and then I guess things must have taken a bit that, of a turn for the worse. That's it, yeah. So the building was still being built around us at that point. Um, we, we got the handover of the building in October, and then we started doing our site acceptance testing and installation of, uh, of everything else around us, apart from the force plates and, and everything. Um, and then in March, we were closed down. Um, we had to shut with the rest of the university, and it wasn't until the, the June, July time that I was able to come back in 
and slowly start um, getting the, the area ready for people to come back. Um, we haven't been able to do any large studies as yet, um, just because we haven't been able to get the participants through because of the COVID. Yeah, absolutely. Sadly, but hopefully that things are getting better and uh, we'll look to be doing larger participant studies um, in the near future. Yeah, and I don't know if you can hear, but this space is well ventilated as the fans can. In incredibly, yeah, yeah, we're a big space, yeah. And these doors, that, that go straight outside as well. That's so straight can, to the outside, yeah. So it's ideal for people bringing uh, equipment into the space. We can bring stuff, a lot. We, we designed the building in able to support um, what we didn't know was coming. So we, 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 we didn't know if we would need to bring in large sets, large equipment into here. So we, we designed the building so we had that access from day one. So who primarily uses this space then? Is it mainly researchers from the universities and exactly. the university network? Yes, we aren't, we aren't using it for teaching at the moment. Um, we, we use it for research. It's a research facility uh, and it, we, we are interdisciplinary as well. So we work across all the different colleges and other universities. I've just really enjoyed the following the, the, the project from conception through to implementation to now creating uh, a research output um, for our researchers who I guess you're going to interview uh, later. Um, yeah, it must be a great feeling to see something, to conceive of the thing yeah. and then see it actually being used for a real world positive output. Exactly, and, and, and uh, the, the positive medical applications to it, which we hadn't envisaged, um, it is a real plus point, it's leaving a positive footstep. Brilliant. Behind. Thank you so much uh, okay. for inviting me in. We're going to go for a, a quick tour underneath and see the nuts and bolts of, of the machinery. Excellent. Um, but we'll cut to that bit and we'll, um, we'll see some demos. Have you got some videos of some demos of like things happening on the floor and stuff? When well, you move your equipment off, we can, we can, we can um, get it going. All right. Yeah, yeah. We can, we can, <laughs> some we great can footage of me going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I can play back a, a recording of a, of a train and you can feel it go through the points and stuff like that. Oh, wow. uh, you can f play back a recording of uh, a, a, a boat on a mooring. I get horrendously motion sick. So. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we, can do, we can do things like that. And then you know, uh, recordings of a floor and people walking in footsteps coming towards you and going. So we can play back some real, wow. real, real world recordings and, you can, and you'll be able to feel the, um, the accuracy uh, which you can replay these things. Brilliant. Looking yeah. forward to that. No problem.